It's safe to have a gentle heart. <laughs> Doesn't always feel like it, but it is. It's the secret to have a soft, gentle heart. To let your heart break sometimes and get bigger. Always getting bigger. Mm. You know, you don't have to be frightened that you'll get stu stuck in the dark because you can't, you cannot. You will always be brought out of the darkness. Who actually might prolong your time in the darkness by worrying, by getting scared that you're going to be stuck there forever and making a big stew. But it's okay. It's okay. You will always be brought out of the darkness because you are light. Mm -hmm. Duality doesn't really exist. It just seems to. <laughs> but I understand it's very convincing. <laughs> it's a very convincing hallucination. Mm -hmm. You know, gentleness is stronger. You know, if you think of Amma and what her soft, gentle heart has been able to achieve, you know, just taking care of that within you, it It's a very powerful influence. It is one of the most important ways you can influence everything around you. Now, it's not to deny all the rest of the, you know, of what we can go through. But to keep remembering that the answer is always found through gentleness and love. You know, you know, sometimes we have to, you know, stand up for ourselves or whatever. It, but it can be done through gentleness. Now, most of us on the earth plane, we have a sub-belief that gentleness has no power that it's weak. But we have these figures like Ama, Christ, Krishna, all of them, Buddha. They all go forward in gentleness and any spiritual master is in gentleness, even though they can be firm. It's the spirit of a soft heart that I'm wanting to talk to you guys about. Because often it's the thing within us that we're so scared of, which is why when I go to you, I often hit levels of defense in you because you're scared of your own. Immensely powerful, soft heart. Okay. 
So the power of the satsang is to free your hearts, to help you come into a kind of a self-acceptance, a self-embrace that will free your heart. It comes from self-acceptance, self-embrace, self-compassion. You can't have it otherwise. It will be fake otherwise. So I'm wanting to tell you about a dream I had once when I was at a sort of a pivotal point on my journey. And we are all at pivotal point in the world right now. It's because things are heating up. And it matters how we handle this. But in the dream, I was standing on a mountain and I looked up and I saw a whole train, you know, like a, you know, a physical train with many, many cars, 25 cars, high above me, and it was traveling, sort of stretched out vertically, all in a line. It was traveling over my head, and it was going to land to my right somewhere, but not dangerous. But it was a whole train. And as it landed, I heard enormous crashing of these cars, train cars, hitting the ground, okay? And I thought about it afterwards. I thought, that's the most bizarre dream. And then I realized that what was going was my train of thought, okay? My usual train of thought I was outgrowing it. Yeah. And as I outgrew this train of thought, I I came into my heart more. I had more peace in my thoughts. I had more of a quiet mind. Right. So, you see, when we grow, real growth, I'm talking about real growth, not phony growth, real growth will happen as we shift more into the present, into our hearts, into our body. And what will happen is our thoughts change. And we'll get, well, they'll actually get fewer even if it's not very noticeable, there'll be a little few fewer thoughts. And it might be very noticeable. It is our train, our usual trains of thoughts and our ideas about the world, the way we think, blah, 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 that stop us from making this shift into self-compassion, into our hearts. We could say a shift into our heart that that promotes self-compassion. It doesn't matter which way you do it. No, it is unsettling to go through these kind of changes. You know, we might go like, which way's up for a while? We might be sort of disoriented. But you just keep, you know, your mantra, praying to Ama, just keep heading in the direction you want to go. You see, you guys, I really, I kind of really want to like, shake you in a way it's like you either do it now or you do it in another life 
you know, we're really in this mess because so many of us have just listened, you know, we haven't really walked the spiritual journey in a, in a deep way. I mean, this is part of why we are as we are, why the world is as it is. I mean, we, the universe is always reflecting back to us what we're doing. And it's not like, you know, our personal fault. We're bad, bad, bad at all. Please don't don't do that. But it's it's more like just just get it. Yeah, good. You know, again, we were talking about being stuck yesterday. And one of the things with, you know, if you have a the flow of love in your heart, just like a flow of river, and if it's blocked, we will get more and more experience of the discomfiture of being stuck. And our our world will our personal world will show us this. will be in it. It will be in, in the air we breathe. It will be in all the events around us. And all the events around us will be trying to help us become unstuck. And let this flow of love in your heart, let this river of love in your heart to flow outward. This is what we're so scared of. This is what we need so much. All the, all the people around us are families and friends, they all need it. We need it. The world certainly needs it. See, it's almost like when the train of thought, when we drop our usual train of thought, we move into more presence and we notice the data the universe is giving us. We're getting a lot of data from the universe right now. And it's like, letting it liberate you. Again, I'm feeling this, you guys, I can feel it. Some of you are feeling really, really deeply stuck. I can feel it. Now understand, the stuckness is just where you're scared to let the love flow. That your ego does not want to die. You're scared of moving into truth at this new level. That's all. It's not a sin. There's no sin. It's what we're like. Little kids, just before they learn to talk, they'll often have tantrums with frustration because they, they want to express. And they throw temper tantrums with the frustration. And often, then they start to talk right after that. It's all good, you guys. In that case, like the tantrum's not bad. It's just the child's just, I want to talk and communicate. And it's having the tantrum that, that bumps the child up into talking. You know, 
if you can, like this image of this train passing over your head, even just thinking of it a little bit, do you know, like loosening your train of thought, like making more room for the data coming from your hearts to come in. But you guys, sometimes these changes can be profoundly uncomfortable. You know, so you have a couple of weird days, you know? I'll tell you what happened to me once. I was, you know, everybody's process is different. So don't don't compare yourselves or anything. You know, this is just my way. But I remember feeling like really surrounded, you know, like life looked really dreary and tough. And I I went to bed for the afternoon, which was one of my signature things to do. I'd like go to bed. And I lay there and I was just with myself. And I lay there some more. Yeah. You know, felt heavy, stuck. Yeah, just, just really, maybe you can feel, can I communicate like the, how uncomfortable it was? And it went on and on and on. Suddenly, suddenly you guys, my heart opened in this. And this energy came up from my deep male side. And his words to me were, I think you need some help here. <laughs> so do you see inside me, what was taking place was my deep male aspect, which had been functioning unconscious, more unconsciously at that, you know, prior to that, was coming in with a much bigger, more powerful support of my feminine aspect, of my feminine wanting to share love. Do you see? And, and my power went way up. And I, you know, I started to feel much better. And then in the days and weeks after that, my love power went up and out. Like, because this, you know, this is just my way, particularly. We all, you know, we all have our different ways, but, but I just was with myself. You know, I, I didn't have any hope of getting out of it. I was just in it. And that's, the secret of the evolution, I didn't, I stayed with whatever I was going through. I didn't um, try to avoid it. Although, you know what, when I did try to avoid it, because I remember, again, one of the things I used to do was if I couldn't stand, if I got really, really stuck, sometimes I would just get up and go and go to the store you know, get food or, or go buy a shirt. But I would be aware of myself doing those things. Do you see what I mean? I watched myself doing them, knowing that that was no escape. But I didn't criticize myself for doing those. I just watched, you know, it might be better than lying in my bed, sweating, <laughs> feeling full of darkness for some hours. Yeah, like that is the real journey in my experience. It it's 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 really like this climbing a mountain and sometimes you know you're on a you're on a cliff and it's dark and the winds start and you're just you know hoping that God exists. And then in the dawn you wake up 
and there is a beautiful mountain meadow and you go, oh, it's all good. But many of you guys, like not, not you guys, um, I wouldn't say that actually, but many seekers get stuck in a, just a very small, boxed, heady journey. Well, it's just like, you know, in link, link to LinkedIn, there's, you know, climate stuff. And there's like, there's good news and all this stuff. And the good news always gets like a million, you know, checks. But this one I saw just recently is talking about how, you know, there are plastic particles in the rain. And there's um, even uh, pharmaceuticals in our rain, <laughs> you know. And it's like, it got one thumb up from me. <laughs> and Stephanie liked my comment. And there is dead silence and the rest. And it's sort of like, this is so us. We're we're not we're not facing what needs to be faced. We're off like um, you know, posting pretty flower stuff or um avoiding it. But we do this in our lives too. We go into the trivial and we avoid. Facing our hearts. Except you guys are here. And this is heart-facing energy. And if some of you have come because there's a very deep stuckness, it's kind of right where your ego meets your soul really deep. your soul's wanting this kind of energy, this kind of climate to help you soften to yourself, to help you soften to yourself. You guys, you'll only evolve through being soft to yourself. Please. <laughs> you can't, you cannot evolve by chast chastising yourselves. You can't. Yeah, if you can, you know, if you could stand sort of outside your experience and see that the whole reason we're having these wars and why we're not changing is we're being too harsh with ourselves and other people. You know, I'm always talking about, you know, the guys might have a hard time. And really what we're seeing is, I remember what one speaker called unconscious male aggression. So what it is, is it's the male polarity of the human race taking action on the world, right? Outward, outward focus, taking action on the world, coming from a very asleep perspective. And this energy does terrible things. It exploits the earth, it exploits people, it, it sets up wars. And the gentler values of the female polarity are just not operating really because the women are so scared they don't stand with their hearts and this thing that Amma was hinting at about that men could have a hard time you know what I think might happen is the women finally the rage erupts and they erupt in rage and I'm going like well it's good to wake up but a whole bunch of feminine rage I don't know what troubles that's going to cause you know but anyway so this is why i talk about the soft heart not to run from anything it helps you face things so you see supposing something upsetting happens with somebody close to you so 
the wise way is to just be with it, be with it till you come to clarity inside yourself. Then you speak gently, clearly, with your own self respect, self compassion, maybe self compassion because you're facing something that you faced a million times before. You've compassion for yourself for like having to go through it again. But you will have the best chance for reconciliation or for a you know for a healthier relationship if you just scream and rage. You just you hurt yourself. You hurt the other person. But sometimes we have to feel rage on the way to resolving something inwardly to get to the point of being able to speak to somebody with neutrality. The soft heart, you guys, is key. The soft heart. You know, when I was having that really tough day, when that deeper masculine came in in support of my feminine, what had happened just before that is I finally felt my heart opening because I, I was lying there. I went, oh, that's nice. I could feel my heart opening. I just was there with it. And this male energy, it was so male. It was sort of like, really, it was just like, I think you need my help here. It was just like that. And it was coming up from deep in my subconscious. So to be able to help me operate more consciously. You see, the when you go deeper, your life becomes very uh, entertaining. Like, my life is never boring. Um, as I notice all this, all that's going on with me. <laughs> it just is never boring. <laughs> mm, it's unsettling. It's unsettling, I'll tell you. Like, this. All of us know what darkness feels like. We know how hard, how hard it is. You just keep. You don't run from it. You just keep steering to God, steering to Amma. Like, you know, to actually embody your true nature, it, it doesn't happen easily. Do you know what I mean? It's God isn't cheap, you guys. There's a price to pay. Yeah. So you just pay it. The most important thing is if you've got a teacher to help you stay on the right track so you don't waste time. Just before, this is sort of a non sequitur, but just before we started, I was talking with Anna and Anna reminded me that after COVID, she had COVID at the ashram, and afterwards her hair grew in curly. You know, it's like life number two. We get all these signals and signs, you know, we get these changes, and it's just to, to see the weave, to see what the universe wants us to get. It's life number two. Every time Anna looks in the mirror, it's different. It's showing her it's life number two. It's not the same. We, you know, our, our lives are full of these sort of things. It's just to stay present enough to notice them. And then you guys, especially the women, to value them. To value this level of observation and knowledge and the weaving. Oh, and I want to go back to this male energy erupting in me. 
the reason he wouldn't have been able to come in before was because on some deeper levels, I was walling him off through distrust of the masculine inside me even, okay? This is from old patriarchy stuff, probably. But when I got vulnerable enough and open enough, he could come in and help me. The men, listen, you guys, please realize the men want to please the women. They really are kind of desperate to please the women, really. As little boys, they were desperate to please their moms. And it's also the function of the male in the world is to help the feminine, you know, to help support her so she could raise kids, you know, in the old days. The way it's been for thousands of years, the, you know, the expression was, um, you know, that the men helped, uh, the men worked to support the women, raise the kids, which was the really important job. That was the top job. And whatever job a man had was to help her do this. And that, you know, means that the, the next generation coming up, we, we have good quality kids because they've got their needs met. They got their hearts met. They weren't like walking around with huge unbonded deficits. Yeah. Guys really want to please the women. And, you know, when a woman wakes up, Uh, the more you wake up, the in my experience, the softer the men are with you over and over and over. Because you're being soft with yourself. You're honoring yourself. Yeah. There's some movement around this blockage we're working with. And the problem is actually the thing that's stopping the opening is in your personalities, you guys, you have trouble forgiving yourselves. It's like there needs to be a deeper levels of self-forgiveness here for that for this deeper love to flow. Mm -hmm. That's it. And okay, this is really important. Okay, please remember this, even write this down. Your problem with self-forgiveness is coming because you've forgotten who you really are. You've forgotten your true nature, so you judge yourself. Yeah. Right. Right. You can only judge yourself if you've forgotten your true nature. That's what this, I want to say problem, it's not really a problem. But that's the trouble, it's very deep. It's in, in, I can feel it in all your hearts, you guys. It's a very, very deep level that's your soul's really wanting to open. And so it's like the, your soul's shining a light on this. The problem is trouble self-forgiving, trouble forgiving yourself. And I'll tell you, if you've got a grudge with somebody else underneath, you have a grudge with yourself. Do you see what I mean? If you're, 
if you haven't forgiven somebody else, it's, it's because underneath that you haven't forgiven yourself. Yeah, it's you've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten about your true nature that just loves you guys. Nothing can stop it. You can wall it off in your personality, but <laughs> your soul just goes, well, <laughs> I guess he or she wants life 5,286. <laughs> to face the same thing again. That's it. This is the stuff that hits home with you guys. I have to say, it's like, you know what? Self-interest is, is it. Okay. This is for any spiritual secret. You know, really? When I got down to, do I want another life? No. And at that point, my love started flowing. <laughs> it came down to what Premisuda wanted. Do you see? We're always working with ourselves. What, you know, in in the in America, there was, you know, what was good for General Motors is good for America, right? And we know that that's not really true. But in fact, what's what's truly good for you is truly good for the world. Right. You take care of yourself and your journey, and the world will be enhanced. I want to say it's breakthrough time, ladies and gentlemen. It's breakthrough time. There is no reason to hold on to this. There's this third conflict starting up in the South China Sea, you know. So we have like wars all over the world. There is just no good reason not to let this love come through now. That's it. That is the thing we can do about the wars. You can let this love come through. Good. This is making sense to you. That South China Sea, I think, is one of the most dangerous flashpoints. I don't think it's uh, the Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. So this love, we might as well let the love flow. Good. This is a, you know, this satsang, we're working very, very deeply. Even though it's like kind of a little bit ordinary, kind of, but you'll find, I think, afterwards, you'll notice. That's it. Never be scared of love, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Never be scared of love. Really. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll open up for comments or questions. Um, all of you guys, there's more freedom with this deeper love in you. But remember, you know, it's it's a gradual process. We can't, but still, right now. You guys, it's really important we do this. <laughs> do we free our love? Remember, it's being soft with yourself. And 
Just remember your trouble forgiving yourself is just that you've forgotten your true nature because you are God. You are unconditional love. Mm. Right, 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 like, right, let that sink in, right? You are that. You are unconditional love. That's it. That's it. What possible thing could you have to forgive yourself for? Really? The only thing to forgive yourself for is how deluded we get. Forgive yourself for falling asleep. The whole game here is to fall asleep and then wake up. So how can that be so terrible? There's nothing to do, you know. It's just a deeper level of being, a deeper level of sinking into your bodies. sinking into your hearts. When you feel a softness in your body and a softness in your head, you're surrendering. That's a surrender. Let yourself outgrow your train of thought. Really. This is the thing. It's your train of thought that is the hardest for me to get through. Really. Because this dislodges thought. Your thought gets dislodged. Your, your head loses its throne, you guys. And your heart starts getting more power. And as you do that, you come into sanity and you relax. You relax physically. You relax. And everybody likes you more. <laughs> they do. Except really defended people, which will like might get threatened. Yeah, let your heart soften. Let your heart soften to yourself. And remember, you know, if you're worried about your dreams not coming true or you're frustrated, remember you're a divine being. So you're everything. Like, it doesn't really matter about what's happening, you know? really whether your dreams are coming true or not it's kind of like your divine being it's like you're gonna step out of this dream and you're gonna come back to center and go oh that was interesting it doesn't really matter what the dreams are coming true in this kind of dream do you see just be looser about your goals all of them Most important thing really is how you treat people. Truly. Really. How you treat yourself, how you treat others. Yeah. It's more important, you know, what goes on inside you is more important than any action.
You know, around a spiritual master, beautiful things happen because of what is going on within the spiritual master. So as a result of what's going on within the spiritual master, lovely things happen around. Miracles happen. People accelerate. That's the secret spiritual master, like, The power is on the inside. Mm -hmm. That is what's controlling everything that is happening around you is what is going on on your inside, you guys. That is creating all your circumstances all the events within your lives it's, 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 it's what is going on inside. You know, my way was always physical. It's like, you know, studying with Abraham and then, you know, this lying down on my bed and just being with myself and experiencing eruptions going on in my psyche and my body. And But everybody's got their own way. It's like, please don't measure yourselves at all. We, we just, whatever way we have is tailor-made. But if, as a result of hearing what I said, you make more space for you to go through your own process without judging it. Like, so with my process, it's made me lazy. It's like a lazy process, lying in bed, working stuff out. Like, if I judge myself for not being, like, super busy, I never would have done this deeper work. See, this is what I mean. We cut ourselves off at the knees with our judgment. It's just my way. I get put down on my bed and I am there till I'm through the process. And then I'm brought up again and I can be busy again as busy as I ever get, which is very busy, I have to tell you. <laughs> I am such a contemplative personality. It's like, you know, nothing happens. Kremisut is life. Like, <laughs> nothing happens outward. But it's a whole landscape inside. Uh, your way, you, you guys honor your particular way. Please. Please, we all have our own ways. Yeah, we're all very idiosyncratic in our truth. And every spiritual master says they have a completely different perspective on truth. And they're all coming from light, but they've got different perspective coming from their different focus of study. It's like uh, it will be colored by their conditioning in a way. Like, you know, remember Amma's Mother kept her so busy, and she was always, as a little kid, she was always, like, having to clean everybody's house and walk five miles to clean her uncle's house. And she got stuck with all the family chores from, like, 4 a.m. till 10 o'clock. That went on for years. That, that pattern is of busyness continued. That's the way Amma's lived her life. With that level of, of exertion and effort. 
our, our conditioning does color stuff, but it's meant to. It's not like a bad thing. Your conditioning isn't all bad. It's like, remember I was talking to you about my family and the intellectual conversations we had over the dinner table. That was kind of key to me finding a way of truth that was also backed by the intellect. So it would be backed by the intellect, backed by the emotions, backed by the spiritual level, backed by all levels. Your conditioning's got really good stuff in there. You have your own way. And let yourself have it. Give space to it. You know, one of the things I used to, when I was um, coming up, is I used to think, well, I don't see many spiritual teachers talking about the emotional tapestry or talking from this very, very feminine psychological thing. And you know what? I was supposed to do it. It's my job. So it's not wrong. It, it was Premisuta's point of focus. Yeah, somebody had to stand and talk about it. Yeah. Right. 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 Good. We have to let ourselves be ourselves. That's why, you know, my love of you guys is kind of wild love. Like I, I kind of try to steer you in the direction your soul's wanting to go, but you're just beautiful the way you are. I see your beauty. Right. Yeah, it's funny. I'm getting, it's interesting. I'm getting, it's like from the gods, basically. It's like, um, this is a very good note to, you know, it's complete the satsang is, I see your beauty, you guys. I see your beauty. Any input from me is to help for your beauty. And sometimes your egos don't want to free your beauty. <laughs> so it's like Premasuda. Yeah, be quiet, Premasuda. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah, but I see your beauty. I really want you to know that. So if you guys, some of you feel like any criticism for me, please, I see your beauty. We're just at this time where it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a no nonsense time. It's like the shift needs to happen. Uh, the birth needs to occur. So I'm feeling this, and this is being communicated to you guys. That's it. Remember, Mama says our lives are like sentences. So we're in a life, and this is a sentence is going to end with a period, and there'll be a new one. Or maybe we'll get to cycle off. But what is it? Ama says, come quickly, children. Do you know those books, The Awakened Children? It's like, come quickly, children. She's been saying it for 40 years. <laughs> come quickly. Yeah. Come quickly. Yeah. But you guys, I don't want you to like... Don't rush yourselves. It's okay. Most important thing is I see your beauty. And if I can see your beauty, imagine how much Ama sees your beauty. Yeah. 
for all the moms, you think of your children. You know, especially when they're little, if you think of them when they're little. And how beautiful they are. They have no idea how just adorable they are. They're, they're trying to please you. They're scared of doing it wrong. They have no idea just how cute they are. Just in themselves. Like, what did Amma say? She said, she said, this was a couple of years ago. She said she just really liked our, us. And that she really liked our bodies. And that she really liked the way we, we moved. She really liked the way we moved. She said this, this is what we're like with our little kids. We love the way they move. They're so adorable. This is Amma with us. You guys, this is our souls with us. Please, please let this in. Ah. Right. Right. Okay, this is good. This is really, really good. Yeah, and you know, she loves the way we move. I'm a, and this will be, it will be all of her children at all the different spiritual levels they're in. She'll just love the way they move. Love their faces. And the guys just think that this was your mom with you. Your mom loved your little face. Yeah. That's it. Your little body is a little kid. The way you ran. The way you said, hi, mom. Right. Mama loves, loves us. The way we move, the way we talk. That's it. Our souls adore us this way as well. Mm -hmm. We're the beloved. We're the beloved of our soul and our souls works both ways. My feeling is to complete the satsang just with that. How loved you are how deeply you're seen and understood, even if you don't think so. Because remember, the depth to which this one has gone in herself, that I can see you, I see through you, I see, this is how I see through you, I see through your games to the deeper truth. And the games are okay, it's okay. It's okay. You just, I just remind you, you don't have to play them. You can just let yourself be loved. Let yourself be understood. Right. And if it's hard to think of that coming from me, think of it from Amma. Think of it coming from your soul. Or if you want to be a really high-level spiritual seeker, you understand yourself. Because when you understand yourself, your ego loses power. Because you get it. You, you get it. You don't get fooled by your ego anymore because you understand yourself. You understand how your ego formed and what it says to you and how, you know...
yeah, you you become you 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 demystify the spiritual process when you understand yourself. And this is the biggest obstacle, you guys. You have the hardest time understanding yourselves. And really, if you think of what I've said to you, all my comments are actually coming in very deep light bulletins to help you understand yourself. Because it's when you understand yourself that your life will start making sense. Before that, it won't. Okay? I'm going to say that again. Before. Or you understand yourself, your life will not make sense. Once you understand yourself, it will make perfect sense and it's far easier to grow. This is why all the non dualists talk about self attention. They, they call it self inquiry, but it's not the inquiry so much it's the attention it's the noticing wanting to understand why you are as you are so when i understood myself when i got to the point of understanding that my my parents hadn't wanted me and that came from other lives where i had dissed my true nature over and over again. So I created this life where my parents were so stressed at the time, they didn't want me. So there was that flavor to my life and to what I was bringing. And it came over and over again. And every time I would have to give it over to my soul and and ask it to be healed. But once I understood it, it didn't bother me. It Once I understood it, I didn't believe it anymore. I just thought, well, this is like uh, something I have to get over. I didn't believe it. I didn't let it stop me valuing myself. Whereas before I understood myself, I did. It, it was much harder to, to live, really. So, yeah. So you guys, we're in a very busy life and the deepening takes time. And this is, again, great compassion, great gentleness with yourselves. Please, please, it's, if nothing else, please just get the being soft with yourself. Not indulgent, but soft, like a loving mother, loving, forgiving mother. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to end on, you guys are so beautiful. You really, you have no idea how beautiful you are to me. Truly. Yeah, right. Please get that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Bye.